اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلاحت و سلام علی محمد و علی علی وسلم ٹوڈے وی ول اسٹڈی سیون رکو آف سورہ النحل لاسٹ رکو اینڈڈ وتھ دس کوسچن آر دوز پیپل ہو آر پلاننگ ناول ڈسپشنز اگینسٹ دا ٹروتھ ناٹ ہارفائڈ دیٹ دا ریبیوک وچ واز اسٹرک ٹو دا فارمرس may come to them with this prayer that may Allah Almighty help us in understanding the Holy Quran by the grace of His beloved Prophet Rahmatullil Alameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Let us start today's session Surah An-Nahl Ruku 7 comprising verses 51 to 60 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa qala allahu la taktakhizu ila haynis naeem And Allah Almighty has said, Do not take for yourself two deities. Innama huwa ilahum wahid fa iyaya farhabun. He is but one God. So fear me only. Farhabun, remain alarmed. Great. It is a clear instruction from Allah Almighty not to assign any associate with him. He is the only deity and is fulfilling the needs of his all creatures. He is the true creator and honor and beside him are all creatures and totally dependent upon him. The way we recognize his supremacy and dominance in our corporeal world like that we need to adapt our lives in this regard. The natural way to achieve this purpose is not to assign any partner with him in his essence and attributes. Relate our all necessities with him and consider all our capabilities and knowledge as not ours, but the benediction of him upon us. In chapter 43, Surah Az-Zuhra, verse 84, it is mentioned, It is He who is God in heaven and God on earth. He is the wise one, the all-knowing. We need to remain careful in our relationship with Allah Almighty and to spend our lives in accordance with His commandment. If we do this, we will become eligible for the benedictions of Allah Almighty. In chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 40 it is given o children of israel remember my blessing which i bestowed upon you and fulfill my covenant i will fulfill your covenant and you be in my awe only walahu ma fi samawati wal ardi walahu dinu wasiba and to him belongs what ever is in the heavens and earth and it is his law which is governing afa ghayr allah tattaqun so are you cautious of those other than allah almighty wa ma bikum min ni'matin fa min allah and whatever you have of benedictions are from allah almighty summa iza masakum turru fa ilayhi tajarun when you are touched by some harm to him you cry for help wasiban remain in effect unceasingly taj aruna you cry for help whatever in the heaven and earth is under the ownership of allah almighty since the inception of this multiverse his prescribed laws have been governing it All resources in these multiverses are created by Allah Almighty and the knowledge, art, capabilities and tactics are in fact His blessings upon us. These cannot be created by oneself nor they can be purchased. In chapter 55, Surah Ar-Rahman, it has been iterated many times. فَبِأَيِّ آلَىٰ إِرَبِّكُمَا تُقَزِّبَانَ Which favors of your Lord will you both deny? The most important benediction in this world is the guidance. 
therefore his obedience is the most essential thing in all circumstances the sign of this veracity is that whenever some adversity whenever some adversity touches us we forget others and direct our attentions towards him and cry for help it means that realization of this reality is in fact deep within ourselves that the true deity and creator is allah almighty who is all capable of fulfilling our all needs summa iza kashafu durra ankum then when he removes the harm from you iza farikum minkum bi rabbihim yushrikun a party of you associates others with their lord yak furu bima atayna hum so they would be ungrateful of what we have given fata matta u fasofa talamun then enjoy yourself soon you are going to know fata matta u then you take advantage when allah almighty responds to the invocations of people and take off those pains from them then some people start ascribing partners with their lot and associate their evident means which remove the adversity as their own capabilities and knowledge this perception shows ingratitude of allah's blessings such like people forget their pledge when they were encapsulated by the hurdles and drags in chapter 10 surah yunus verse 22 it is stated he it is who enables you to journey through the land and the sea and so it happens that when you have boarded the ships and they set sail with a favorable wind and the passengers rejoice at the pleasant voyage then suddenly a fierce gale appears and wave upon wave surges upon them from every side and people believe that they are surrounded from all directions and all of them cry out to allah almighty in full sincerity of faith if you relieve us from this we shall surely be thankful ungrateful people forget that such movements can come again in their lives wa yaj'aluna lima la yalamuna nasibam mimma razaqna hu and they assign to what they do not know a portion of what we have provided them tallahi la tus alunna amma kuntum taftarun by allah you will certainly be questioned about what you used to fabricate la tas alunna surely you will be asked these ungrateful folks and those who ascribe their illusionary partners with allah almighty whom they don't know assign a portion from the provisions given by allah almighty to them they have forgotten this reality that one day they will be presented in front of their lot where they will be questioned about those fabrications in chapter 4 surah an-nisa verse 48 it is stated indeed Allah Almighty does not relent for ascribing partners with him and relents from anything other than it to whom who desires and whoever ascribes partner with Allah Almighty verily he has contrived a great sin wa yaj'aluna lillahi albanati subhana and they assign daughters to Allah Almighty exalted is he walahum ma yashtahun and for themselves what they desire waiza bushira ahaduhum bil unsa and when any of them is given the tiding of a female zalla wajhuhu muswaddam wa huwa kazim his face becomes dark and he suppresses grief muswaddan black dark kazimum suppresses grief these people have even crossed at limit in polytheism 
that they assign creatures of Allah Almighty as his daughters, but for themselves they are only wistful of sons. It means that they give precedence to their own desires over their lot. In chapter 53, Surah An Najm, verse 21 and 22, it is mentioned what for you the males and for him the females. That indeed is an unfair division. And their own condition is that when among any one of them gets the news of the daughter, then his face envelops with darkness and he is filled with inward grief. Yatawara minal kaumi min su in ma bushira bi. He hides from the people for the ill of which he got the tiding. Ayam si kuhu ala hunim am yadus suhu fit tura. Should he keep it in humiliation or bury it in ground? Allah sa a ma ya kumun. Be aware, evil is what they decide. The first underlined word is Yatawara hides himself. Ayum sikuhu. Should he keep it? Honim humiliation. Ya dussuhu. Bury it. Such people consider this news as a bad omen for themselves and try to conceal this tiding from their fellow people and hide themselves from them. He reconciles whether he should bear the shame and take the daughter or bury her alive in the earth. Whether it is son or daughter, both have their own substantiality and being a parent how can one differentiate between them? It is absolutely wrong to show happiness and pride on the birth of son while manifest grief and shame on the daughter's birth. We don't have this knowledge that who will be beneficial in the future. There is the possibility that whoever we consider bad for us will be better for us in the future and today whom we think good for us, tomorrow he will be bad for ourselves. Lil lazina la yo minuna bil akhirati masalu su for those who do not believe in the hereafter, set up evil example. Walil lahil masalul ala wahuwal azizul hakim and Allah's example is the greatest and he is the exalted, the wise. Those who do not believe in the hereafter and look for quick gains in this life set up an evil example in the society. They have set aside this reality that they will be presented in front of their Lord for the accountability of their actions after death. And those stages are totally dependent upon one's present action in this life. Whereas Allah's examples are associated with the greatest attributes. He is the creator and the true deity. To him belongs the exaltation and the wisdom. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, creator of resources for the worlds. Ar-Rahman, Nir-Rahim, the beneficent, the merciful. Maliki Yawmiddin. Lord of the Day of Judgment. He has been fulfilling the needs of his creatures since their inception and the Lordship belongs to him only. That is why he is only worthy of worshipping. A summary of 7th Rukh. Allah Almighty is the only God and is fulfilling the needs of his all creatures. He is the true creator and honor and beside him are all creatures and totally dependent upon him. The natural requirements to approbate the reality is to accept his authority over everything, serve only to him and relate every requirement with him and never ascribe any partner with him. Whenever some calamity strikes a man, he forgets all of his fabricated idols and invokes Allah Almighty only. 
which is the manifestation of this veracity that the unconsciousness of man recognize the true creator honor and lord it is the sinfulness to fabricate anything by oneself and associate it with allah almighty such like people will never be absolved may allah almighty help us in understanding the true context of the holy quran and may we act upon it according to the guidance of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sadaqallahu aliyyul azim sallallahu taala ala habibihi muhammadin wa ala alihi wasallam